kids. Miss Flowers here coming to you from the fort and we are just about to wrap up the ending of our Dragon Master's Song of the Poison Dragon book. Are you ready? All right. Chapter 13. Too Late. Worm began to glow green. Drake stood up. Petra, hold my hand, Drake told her. Then touch the hydra with your other hand. Petra nodded. Now Drake, Petra, and the hydra were all linked with Worm. A green light flashed, and seconds later they landed inside King Roland's bedroom. Queen Rose was sitting beside King Roland's bed. She jumped up when she saw Drake, Petra, Worm, and the hydra. Guards! she yelled. Drake stepped forward and bowed. Please, your majesty, we know how to help the king. The hydra can heal him. Hmm, the queen said. Griffith did say that the hydra might be the key, the key to healing the king. Two guards ran in. They pointed spears at the dragons. Queen Rose held up her hand. Lower your weapons, the queen said, but stand your ground if the dragons try to harm the king. Take action. Petra held the dragon stone in her hand. You can do it, Drake told her, and she nodded. Petra closed her eyes tightly. Please, she said to the hydra, please sing your song. The dragon stone began to glow. Then the hydra started to sing. Her beautiful song filled the room. Drake and Petra anxiously watched the king. He didn't look any better. Griffith rushed into the room just as the song faded. It didn't work, Petra told Griffith. Griffith put a hand on her shoulder. Drake was only sick for a few minutes before the Hydra healed him, he said. Perhaps the king's healing will take longer. Queen Rose nodded. His hand already feels cooler to my touch, she said. That gives me hope, and before this I had none at all, so thank you. Griffith turned to Drake and Petra. The king needs peace and quiet, he said. Return the dragons to their caves, then eat dinner and go to bed. I will stay here to watch over the king. But what about the angry mob outside, Drake asked. The guards will keep order, Griffith said. We must not worry. Drake nodded. He reached for Petra's hand. Drake touched Worm. A green light flashed. Then they landed back at the dragon caves. Chapter 14. Zero. Toot, 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 toot. The sound of trumpets filled the air early the next morning. Drake and the other dragon masters rushed outside, along with everyone else in the castle. Villagers filled the courtyard. Toot, 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 toot. Trumpet players stood on the king's balcony. It sounds like they're going to announce something, said Rory. It must be about the king, Petra said. Her face was pale with worry. I hope he's all right. All hail King Roland, the, the guard shouted. King Roland stepped onto the balcony with Queen Rose. and The crowd began to cheer. People of Bracken, I am healed, the king said loudly. I am healed by the very dragon that harmed me. Some people in the crowd began to boo. Silence, ordered the king. What happened to me was an accident, the king continued. Yes, dragons can be dangerous, but our dragon masters work hard to train them. I searched the globe for my dragons. I am not giving up on them now, and neither should you. Drake smiled. He looked at his friends, and they were smiling too. So no more talk against the dragons, the king said. I shall not hear it. And now I must get back to running this kingdom. Good day. Queen Rose led him back inside. Petra threw her arms around Drake. It worked, she said. We saved the king. And all our dragons are safe again, said Anna. Griffith smiled at the dragon masters. Well done, all of you, especially Petra, our newest dragon master. Now let's get to the Valley of Clouds for some training. 
the dragon masters cheered. Later that day, the dragon masters and their dragons went to the valley with Griffith. Petra gently stroked one of the Hydra's necks. I finally have a name for my dragon, she announced. It's Zira. Zira? asked Anna. That's pretty. It's the name of my kitten back home, said Petra. The Hydra reminds me of her since she also purrs when she's happy. Vulcan shoots sparks from his nose when he's happy, Rory said with a giggle. The two girls smiled at each other. Suddenly, Drake heard Worm's voice. Look up! Drake pointed to the sky. A large, dark dragon swooped down. As the dragon got closer, Drake could see his shimmering black scales. He could see the dragon's rider, too, a boy with dark, curly hair. It's Heru and Wati, Drake cried. The Prime Dragon Stone That black dragon is Capri's moon dragon twin, right? Petra asked. Right, said Rory. That's Wati. Drake turned to Petra, and Heru is our friend from the land of the pyramids. Kepri became so sick, so we traveled to the land of pyramids to find her twin. Wati healed her, explained Anna. Everyone ran to Heru as Wati landed in the grass. Kepri quickly flew to Wati's side. He flapped his wings, happy to see his sister. Heru climbed off Wati's back. It's so good to see you again, said Anna. Heru hugged Anna, but he wasn't smiling. I have come because I need your help, he said. He turned to Griffith. There is something wrong with the prime dragonstone. The prime dragonstone? asked Drake. What is that? All of the other dragonstones come from the prime stone, replied Griffith. It is very big and very beautiful and very hidden. Heru nodded, and now... It is dying, he said. I had a feeling something was wrong, said Griffith. My stone has been acting strangely. I have had some trouble communicating with Worm, Drake added. That is why you must come with me, said Heru. Without the prime stone, dragon masters will no longer be able to connect with their dragons. Wow, looks like this book finished and it has set up for another really interesting book. So I'll see you tomorrow with the beginning of a new Dragon Masters book.